Many consider the data within their organisation to be its most important constituent part. How can this data be held and arranged for the long term? What's the best modelling approach for the storage of such data? And how can the trade-off between data retention and cost of storage best be solved? In this session, we'll show you how to build a foundation layer of information which is arranged for the long term and which will remain a trusted source irrespective of any changes in business process. The foundation layer is the heart of the enterprise data warehouse and is responsible for managing data over the long term. This layer records data at the lowest possible level of granularity. The foundation layer is modelled in a normalised fashion, close to third normal form for storage efficiency. As the world of business is changing so rapidly, the data is recorded in a business process neutral fashion. This eliminates the impact of business change and avoids any unnecessary restructuring of data. As with the staging layer, the ETL can move the data into the foundation layer in a drip feed manner. In addition, again common with the staging layer, this layer is accessible by information consumers. We recommend holding data in the foundation layer for as long as possible. It therefore makes sense to implement some kind of information lifecycle management policy with different levels of compression or different tiers of storage to minimise the cost of ownership. This is far better than archiving data aggressively, since the data is still available to be queried. Why do we recommend third normal form and why is a simple star schema not good enough? Perhaps this simple example will help. Let's imagine that I have a retailer that sells a wide variety of goods. Each transaction is made up of multiple items, so you could buy a shirt and a bottle of water in the same transaction. Each transaction is made up of multiple payment methods, for example, gift vouchers, cash, credit cards, etc. Let's say we have a transaction where 40 euro is spent on the shirt and 10 euro is spent on the water. Payments are made by 10 euro of gift voucher and 40 euro of cash. A reasonable question that we may want to ask is about the penetration of gift vouchers across various departments. We may use an attribution to derive this. So we would decide that 2 euros of gift voucher went on the water, 8 euros of cash went on the water, 8 euros of gift voucher went on the shirt and the remaining 32 euros of cash was spent on the shirt. We might think that we could just hold this information in a star schema. The problem comes if the business rule changes. Let's say that a rule is imposed that gift vouchers can only be spent on clothing then suddenly the attribution is different. Suddenly the water is paid for entirely by cash. All of the gift voucher is spent on the shirt and the remainder of the cash makes up the difference on the shirt. If we had only held this information as a star rather than as third normal form, it would have been incredibly hard to revisit this information and update it. When the data is held in third normal form, which is business process neutral, no such revisit is necessary. The starting point for the logical model design may be a blank sheet of paper and a map of existing source systems. More typical is to leverage an enterprise information model sourced from one of the industry bodies or an enterprise data warehousing model from database vendors such as Oracle. Some element of adaptation of the logical model to meet local needs is typically required. In addition, any process-oriented representations included in the model must be removed before it can be transformed into a final physical model. So in summary, the foundation layer represents the heart of the data warehouse. It can be accessed by end users, but its main purpose is to hold data over time.